It's a privilege to be here at Slush. Um, the title of the presentation is Connecting the World, and it's a very ambitious title, but it's something that we at Facebook take very seriously. But before we go there, let me share a story about a company called Pride. So Pride was a very fast and intense ride. We created Pride to let users of affordable smartphones to forget the mobile data. Not very many people understand what's a megabyte or what's a data plan and, and so forth in the first place. But all the pricing of data is done using megabytes. And in growth markets, the pricing of data is the biggest hurdle of connecting more people. <coughs> Excuse me. So we launched Pride during the summer 2013. Uh, we had an MVP at Slush last year, and we started to show it around, and that's where the magic started to happen. In April, uh, end of 20, after 22 pilots, we basically had 183 operators lining up and launching the service. And in June, we did a deal with Facebook. Uh, the team is now part of the Internet.org initiative, and I'm going to give you an update on that. Right, so about Facebook. As you know, Facebook is a place where people basically from all over the world engage with their friends, political leaders, public figures, companies, brands they love, games they love, and interact with each other in multiple different ways. It's a place where people connect, and it's pretty power popular all over the world. And we are just over 10 years old. We have been able to create a very vibrant community. The Facebook itself, we have over 1.35 billion people. Uh, these people share more than 350 photos every day. And more than 700 million people access the site with their mobile phones every day. <clears throat> On Messenger, we just passed more than 500 million users. And these users send more than 12 billion messages every day. Uh, Instagram, the community is more than 200 million users today, and they share more than 60 million photos on a daily basis. And latest addition to the family, WhatsApp, gets every day more than a million new users. So it's very popular and powerful. In Europe, we have almost 300 million users. And here in Nordics, majority of our users access Facebook services via mobile devices. All right. So when people get connected, amazing things happen. So people get closer to the people they care about. Um, OK, let's go one back. <laughs> so people get closer to the, the, the people they care about. Uh, they get access to jobs, opportunities, and ideas, and then basically have access to services that makes their lives better. But technology itself, it is in the progress. So it has to enable these services for everybody. So it can't just be a service for rich and powerful. So we at Facebook, we have been pursuing our mission to make the world more open and connected. And it's something we are working towards, not just improving Facebook itself, but working with our partners to improve connectivity around the world. And that's why last year we launched an initiative called Internet.org, which aims to connect the two-thirds of the world's population that doesn't have a connectivity today. So let's talk about connectivity. ITU is forecasting at the end of the year, we have about 3 billion people connected to online services, mainly via mobile devices. And that's a lot. But it also leaves the rest of the population, the 4 billion people, unconnected. So why we have a, have a kind of goal to connect the rest of the population? It's not the connectivity as an end goal but it's the things that the connectivity enables, as Mark said in Mobile World Congress this year. 
And what are these things? If we can bring developing world into the same level as developed world today, we would be able to create 140 million new jobs, lift 160 million people out of poverty, reduce child mortality, save a lot of lives, and give more than 640 million children access to educational resources for free. It's also good for the economies. The World Bank forecasts that every 10% increase in broadband penetration increases 1.3% in economic growth. Or 10% 2G to 3G substitution increases GDP by 0.15%. And doubling of mobile data use creates an increase in GDP by half a percent. And a 10% increase in mobile penetration increases long-term productivity by 4.2%. So connectivity is a very, very significant driver for economic growth. The current state of connectivity looks like this from a Facebook st uh, standpoint. So this map is how people connect to our services today. And the map and other analysis shows that about 85 to 90 percent of the global population is covered by 2G, 3G, 4G or Wi-Fi signal. So internet growth has been phenomenal. We did a study with McKinsey and McKinsey found these five trends for internet growth. So expansion of mobile network coverage, increasing mobile internet adoption obviously creates growth in mobile internet. Urbanization is another key trend of growth. So about half of the population today lives in urban areas. By 2050, the number will be 67%. And 80% of this urban population lives in developing countries. In urban areas, there's a better infrastructure, there's a better education, and better delivery of data. Another key trend is uh, shrinking device and data plan prices. Very soon, the smartphones will hit the tipping point where the migration from feature phones to smartphones will accelerate rapidly. Uh, if you look at data pricing from 2008 to 2012, the cost of data globally fell 93%. Fourth key driver is a growing middle class. So middle class, these people have more money to spend on services like mobile data. And then utility of internet. So the more people we have on internet, the more useful it becomes for everybody. So as a result of these five trends, uh, McKinsey predicts that 500 million to 900 million more people will join the internet by 2017. But this leaves 4.2 billion people offline. Out of the more than 4 billion, uh, 3.4 billion comes from just 20 countries. Out of those, almost a billion people can't read. And more than a billion people are outside of the coverage of mobile networks. And this gap isn't going to close on its own. So, cumulative internet growth from 2005 to 2008 was about 15%. But from 2009 to 2013, it was only 10%. So the growth of internet is slowing down. So the trends that brought the 3 billion people online won't bring the rest of the world online. So, why is this? The four key barriers, lack of incentives, so if you don't know what's a data plan, you won't buy one. Or if you don't have relevant services, you don't have any incentives to go online. Uh, lack of affordability. You, if you can't afford a device, a data plan, taxes and fees associated with that, you can't basically go online. Um, user capability. If you don't have a digital literacy, or you can't read, these services are not very useful for you. 
or it could be a lack of infrastructure. If you are not within the coverage or there's a lack of adjacent infrastructure like power or electricity, it doesn't help a lot. So we at Facebook, we have partnered with hundreds of different operators and we have range setups where there's a free data to say free data access to Facebook or special pricing programs to connect with your friends. And through these partnerships, we have learned what the kind of affordability of data means for, for access and, and, and affordability of these services. So and we understand that connecting more people is possible only if we make this sustainable for operators. And by solving the affordability problem with certain basic services for free, we can create more awareness of the utility and the benefits of mobile internet and basically speed up the acceleration of paid services as well and get more people connected. Recently, we launched an internet.org app in Zambia, Tanzania and Kenya. And this application provides free access to basic services like education, healthcare, basic finance, basic communication services, and it's all in local languages. In one of these models that we're exploring is basically a free service for everybody, for life. So you get access to basic services like Wikipedia, Google search, Facebook, medical information, and so forth. So this has been live only for a few months in Zambia, and we have basically doubled the amount of internet users in the country. So it's widely popular and successful. Uh, we have brought, with our early tests, more than 3 million people online in countries like Philippines, Indonesia, Paraguay, Tanzania, and so forth. And we have a model where we basically want to get people access to these kind of services. So the last key barrier is as simple as languages. 80% of the internet content is in just 10 languages. So if we want to connect everybody in the world, we have to create an internet that looks like that world. So it can't be like it is today. Um, I was with Mark recently in India, and we launched a million dollar prize for local services in India. And the categories we want to sponsor are agriculture, education, parenting, and unemployment. In these categories, there's a prize, and we will announce the winners in Mobile World Congress in Barcelona this year. We're also extending our FB Start program for developers, so we are giving eligible developers $40,000 worth of free tools and, and services from Facebook. So go and check it out. So to summarize, uh, the mission of internet.org is to bring two thirds of the world's population online who's not yet connected. Um, we recognize that this is a task that Facebook can't do it alone. Nobody can. So that's why we are partnering up with technology leaders like Microsoft, Ericsson, Qualcomm, Samsung, and so forth, and sharing knowledge, projects, and ideas to mobilize the whole industry and different governments. So to conclude, I think the challenge of connectivity is the greatest challenge of our generation. Thank you so much.